Welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my special co-host and honorary co-host, Nick Vale. Okay, uh, this is episode number 180, Free Will and Choice. Basically, we're going to be describing what a choice is, because like, choice is really a matter of speech. In other words, since we don't have a free will, we never technically make choices but, you know, it's a, it's a convention. It's something, it's a, it's a figure of speech, it's a manner of speaking. That, and so we're going to explain, you know, how free will relates to choice. Um, okay, as we do on every episode, you know, in the beginning of the show, we're going to first define what we mean by free will. I'll start us out. Basically, when people say they have a free will... What they're saying is that they're making decisions without anything that's not in, our, in their control, making them for them, or even taking part in a decision. Because in other words, like, if there's something that's taking part in your decisions, um, they're not your free decisions. In other words, let's, let's say you, were, um, you have a class, right, and you're instructed to, to compose a, a, um, an essay, right? And then, like, somebody helps you out, writes half the essay, or even a quarter, or even a tenth of it. You can't say it's your essay, because, like, somebody helped you with it, right? So in the same way, if there's some factor that's taking part, even taking part in our decisions, um, that, that negates free will. And obviously, obviously, because, um, because of um, our genetics and our upbringing, you know, our human behavior being both nature and nurture, there are, there are a lot of factors that take part in every one of our decisions. All right, that's one definition. Nick, just explain. Well, you know, I want to set you up for, uh, because someone will be watching this and say, well, 1% of that essay was 100% mine. All right, here's the thing. That's what, that you're setting yourself up for that. Right, okay, so let's address that. Let's address that, because um, basically... Let's say, I mean, it's not the case, but let's say one, you know, the assertion is that 1% of is this... Is 100% not influenced by Right. Yet. Now, the answer to that, and we just did an entire show on this, is like that 1% would not be free of causes or reasons. So even if it's just 1% of what causes us, what make, again, what causes us to make, to do something, to decide something... That one percent is not free of causality, and if if if, if there's a cause to that one percent factor, there's going to be a cause to that cause, and a cause to that cause. All of a sudden, you've got this. Chain so you're of saying that one percent cannot be one hundred percent free of your nature or nurture. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Or subconscious or, or causality. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. Describe. You know. Define free will just in, in a different way so people can understand. You know. Well, I usually mean. say you could have done otherwise, which is very valid. But today, I'm going to try. Free will means, and this is what it means, is that your life is up to you, that you are in control of your own destiny. You're not a slave to the pleasure principle or any other hardwiring, nature or nurture, your personal history, genetics or conditioning. Your life is up to you. That's perfect. Which is, I can't even explain what that means because it's so incoherent. Free will is, I mean, you're saying define what it means to have free will. I really, I should have told you this before. I can't because it doesn't mean anything. Well, you're, it's a, ma you're it's a made up right. word. It's incoherent. Made up two words put it's together. It's internally inconsistent. It's, it's self-refuting. I don't even know what it means, free will. I mean, I, I know, know the word free and will, but not together. That's, okay, let's explore this. Like, then you ask yourself, well, you know, we have a free will. What is this will supposedly free from or free of? Your genetics and personal history. Now, is it? No, of course it's not. Is it free of causes? Oh, no. people will say free will means I can do what I want. Uh, no one's forcing me to... I do what my desires are. I choose my desires and I do what I want to do because I like to do it. Let's, no one right. has a gun to my head. Right. That's and, what it means. And that... And so, like, some people say that to define free will, but that's actually a misdefinition of free will. That's not what, what the whole debate has been about over, you know, several thousand years, at least a couple thousand, whatever. Basically, yeah, but someone might say you did that of your own free will. Right. No but, one is manipulating you, coercing you, or forcing you. Exactly. But again, that's not free will, and they're, they're right. In other words, like, we could do something... That's and, a figure of speech also. Exactly. Because Nobody's you're still subject to the pleasure principle. That's what's forcing you. Yeah. The entire state of the universe. That's yeah. what I was going to say. It may not be a person that's coercing you. It's hardly or ever a person. You. It's hardly ever a person. Exactly. So, so, fine. You're not being coerced by other people, perhaps, but you're being coerced by causality, by reasons, by whatever it is. 
Okay, now I think we need to define choice and how, and relate it to this concept of free will and explain why technically we don't even make choices. Well, I like to always uh, make the metaphor of skiing, where you have the easy slopes, which are, I think are a green circle, then there's a, a blue square, which is intermediate, and black, I don't know, if you, did you ever ski where the black diamond is expert? No, but I remember skiing. I don't All remember. right, so, so triple black diamond, top expert level of no free will. Technically, the triple black diamond is there's no such word as choice. Technically, on the highest super intellectual level of this discussion, the word choice doesn't mean anything. There's no choice. But since we're on a public access show here and we got to talk to the people, people do use the word choice on the beginner level or even intermediate level of life thinking that they're using that word to, to connote a choice, meaning they could have done otherwise. But really what they're saying is, I prefer this because of all the antecedent conditions of my entire state of the universe and my pleasure principle the moment before, I am just now going to use my physical agency to manifest a, quote, choice, which is the next domino to fall in the, in the personal causal history chain of those dominoes, but it's a little confusing because people do use, it's very confusing, they use, even non-free will believers have struggled with this. Sometimes I say, I'm going to choose that, you know, I just say it as a, as a figure of speech, but I'm not doing anything because there's no me, you know that. Exactly. So, so how do you bridge the gap to the top expert, no free will belief to the beginner who says, well, I make choices? Okay, um, the way we make choices might be like, for example, let's say we were in a movie or a play. And our character, you know, is called upon to choose between cereal and an apple for breakfast. Okay? And they, and they choose cereal. I, like, I think you I'm hungry. You love those two. Yes. So, all right. So here's the thing. You wouldn't say in any real sense like what we're talking about that that actor made the choice to choose cereal over an apple. That it wasn't complete. It wasn't up to the actor at all. It was in the script. Okay? He had to. Our lives are like that. In other words, like... Basically, because there's a cause to everything, the cause to our choosing the cereal rather than the apple. Is... But someone watching the show would say, did you see how that actor chose the apple? No, I know. It's all right. So let's so address they're, this. They're going to be referring to it as a choice. So we're, let's, let's address choice in two different ways. One, most literally, like you were talking about, the what do you call that? That, that black diamond way. The, 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 the super expert, top super expert, expert way. Super expert, right. And then let's let's. No, the super extra way is easy. There's no, the word choice is a. All right. So a, a non whatever the word is. See so if right. I had free will, I would not explain it. No, I understand. All right. So let's let's explain this from a literal misnomer. sense. Misnomer. It's a misnomer. Right. So kind of we're going to like explain it from a literal sense and a conventional sense. Okay. Basically, the literal sense is that because everything has a cause. And the chain of causality behind everything we do regresses back to before we were born, before the planet was created, back to the Big Bang, whatever happened before that. Because of that, we don't really make any choices. Whatever we do is determined by stuff that happened before we were born. Okay? That's the literal technical reason why we don't make any choices. But conventionally, conventionally, as a figure of speech, as a manner of speaking, will say, well, I chose the cereal rather than the apple because I felt like cereal for whatever reason. But that's not, you know, that's not, that's just a figure of speech. It, it doesn't reflect the reality, the, the, the fundamental reality that we had, we had no choice. We had to choose the cereal. And if we would have chosen the apple, we had to have chosen the apple. It wasn't up to us. I was actually debating someone about the Elliot Roger thing, and he emailed me and said, well, Elliot Roger made all those choices, you know, a, a mass murderer. So I want to know, like, if a squirrel is running in the park and goes left or right up a tree, is that a choice? The, the animal, the squirrel, is, or a computer can make a choice, like, you know, in a video game or, or, or some sort of program, like in that movie War Games, the computer's making choices. But you're only making choices based on your programming. Exactly. And you're not in control of your programming or the inputs. So, yes, a mass murderer or a murderer makes choices, but he, he was only acting on his antecedent prior causes of genetics and, uh, you know, and classical his conditioning, his, how he was raised, his genetics. So he made choices, but he was not in control of the choices. 
Exactly. It's just like a computer. A they didn't really make choices. Right. A computer, like a computer might have like a roulette rule wheel or something, right? That it spins it and it might like choose one number out of whatever, how many are on the roulette wheel. But we would never say that the computer chose that because a computer doesn't choose because a computer is completely mechanistic. It's com completely causal. The same applies to the squirrel. The same applies to, to, to us. So a computer chess program that moves a piece, it's not making a choice. No. It is based on unbelievable amounts of data. Right. Exactly. In other words, it's not making a choice because it, a, a choice would imply they would be up to the computer, not imply, it would denote that it was up to the computer whether to do one thing or another. And as we all know, nothing is up to a computer. You know, everything is up to the way the computer is programmed, how the computer is programmed. And if you're watching the show right now and yelling at the screen, disagreeing with us, there's a reason or a cause of why you're doing that. And I'm pretty sure that you're trying to go towards pleasure and away from pain. I don't even know you. Uh, you're trying to, or you're going to call the show next week and yell at us. You're just trying to feel better or smarter and showing us up or going towards pleasure and away from pain because everything has to have a cause or a reason. And that's what you're doing right now, saying we're, you know, calling your friend and saying you got to watch these two guys and show them how wrong they are or whatever. Right. And, and you know, so there's always a, so you're making a choice to pick up the phone or whatever or get upset, but there's still a reason or a cause to that choice going back, regressing to the moment before we were born. And that, again, that's an, like, let's say you, another way of explaining this. You have like 100 dominoes lined up against here, right? And the 99th dom domino topples the 100th. We're not going to say, you know, that domino made the choice to topple it. We're not going to say that the domino didn't have to topple the hundredth. We're going to say, like, the domino didn't choose to topple the hundredth. It had to because it was toppled by the 98th. I know, but people are going to say those are inanimate objects. We're human beings. We have intellect. We have spirits and souls. I mean, don't compare me to a domino. I hear you. All right. So, so that's, right, yeah. that, I'm just dealing with the principle with that example. So right. let's, let's apply that to human beings, you know. Just as the same way a domino, the 99th domino is controlled by 98th, you know, there's a reason or a cause why 99th does what it does. When we're choosing between cereal or an apple, there is going to be cause or a reason why we choose that. Again, so like, so like and again, it, it's always about this chain of cause and effect. We have to like, we just did a show on, on causes, and, but it, it's so important to explain this. Nothing happens without a cause. And if, if you say something's happened without a cause and try to apply this to the free will thing, you can't defend free will anyhow with that because like something that's not caused isn't caused by anything, including a free will or a human being. But the reality, the fact is that nothing happens without it being caused. And so what happens is like, so if we make a quote unquote choice, you know, that has a cause, and that cause has a cause, and that cause has a cause, and this chain of cause and effect is going back to before we were born, before the planet was created, obviously it's not a choice. It was something that was fated, destined, you know, caused to happen by this chain of cause and effect. So as unbelievable and as surreal as what you're trying to say, what you're really telling me, George, is that human beings are really no different than a domino. Exactly. So no wonder nobody likes to watch our show and agree with us. It's very depressing. I mean, it's very unpleasurable, and the pleasure principle is what drives behavior. Nobody wants to get this because I have to admit, at first, it's shocking and depressing to think of myself as an inanimate, you know, no better than a domino. How can we convince people that life is even better as a domino than as a, as a free will human being. All right, let's, let's go with that. But so that's like, what's stopping everyone from getting this. I agree, yeah. I agree. And we should deal with this more, I think. You're right. Um, so what happens is people say, you know, all right, I'm just a domino. Nothing's up to me. You know, I'm so insignificant, whatever. You know, and they don't like that, right? All right, here's the thing. Basically, how about if, like, President Obama or some, the king of some country asked you to do something. Everything you did that day, you were on a mission to fulfill the, the request, the, 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 you know, the request of a President Obama or this king or something, right? That's scenario one. Scenario two is like, you're going through your day just doing what you want, you know, doing just whatever little thing you want, you know, that's what you're going to do. Now, in terms of like, you're feeling more ennobilized, what's it going to be? Like doing something like, for the benefit of the country or Obama or a king or God or something, or just for the benefit of us. 
So, like, so in other words, when you believe in free will, you're doing things just because you want to. This tiny little person in a tiny little world, you know, whatever. When you're doing things from a non-free will perspective, when you understand the free will is an illusion, you're doing whatever you do throughout your days because you are fulfilling the will of God. It's not even Obama or King. You're fulfilling the will of God because God, another word for causality, I think we can say, is God. Because God is all-powerful while causality is all-powerful. Or the universe. Yes. But you sidestep the question. You're, you're, you're saying how great and noble it is to do God's will, but you're also saying we're just dominoes. No, no, what I'm saying what is... What about like... our souls and our brains and our spirits and our psychology and the fact we listen to wonderful, beautiful music and we make operas and art and, you know, uh, we manifest uh, symphonies. Dominoes don't do that. I'm just playing devil's advocate. No, no, I, I hear you. Because I, <laughs> I agree. Uh, dominoes don't do that. Right. How can we say we're dominoes when I listen to, you know, I can make music and I right. the so, guitar? So we're yet, very, but... we're very, very, very complex dominoes. And, and the, the, the essential difference between a domino and us is that we have consciousness. We're conscious of, of what we are. And you're right, there's that complexity also, you know. But essentially, you know, in, in terms of like causality... But I like Mike Laster's definition. When, he, when I told him everything's predetermined, it's depressing, he said, well, that doesn't mean you can't get the girl or the guy. or you de Just because everything's predetermined doesn't mean you don't strive to win the lottery I mean, you know, or get a job promotion or get the house. Knowing everything's predetermined will not stop you from, will not cause you to lie in bed all day and say, what's the point? There's no meaning. It's, uh, it's just as, it's more surreal looking at it this way, but to just be a witness to your life doesn't mean you can't get all the good things because it's just you have to look out for your conditioning model and go towards pleasure. You know, just be aware of it, but you're not in control of it. So it might actually help you uh, alleviate some painful emotions like guilt and resentment when you know it's not, you know, or hate, it's not up to you. But you can still be on the lookout for good things. Exactly. And appreciate them. All right, let's go with this more. Like some people say, you know, if I don't have a free will, you know, my life doesn't have meaning. What's the point of anything? You know, I can't enjoy my life at all. Think of the last time you saw a movie or a play, you know, or something that you enjoyed more than you enjoy your life. You know, you're, you're sitting in this theater for two hours and you're saying to yourself, man, I wish my life was like this, right? Well, I mean, like, the reality is like, okay, um, everything that happened in the movie, you know, was done before you watch it and all. Basically, you're just being a spectator to the movie and you're enjoying it because of what's happening. So, like... That's the perspective. That's the, the way we want to view our lives. You enjoy because you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. And, and it's a good... Uh, the movies are good storytellers, and good storytellers make the best movies, so, you know, vice versa. So either way, if it's predetermined, you're saying a movie's predetermined, it doesn't matter. Exactly. Exactly. You can still enjoy it. Exactly. If you're predetermined to enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's the thing. All right, so, all right, so I, think we've, we've, I think we've covered choice enough. You think they get it? So quite cause Well, it might be easier if you say there's a difference between choice and free choice. Oh, God. All right. Let's deal with it. All right. Like choice and free choice. Because sometimes we, we've said in the past, yeah, you quote unquote choose, but you don't choose freely. OK. Well, it might be easy. Well, first of all, there's no choice. Either one. There's, you, we could say, just make it easier for people. There are choices, but there are no free choices. Right, but again, that, that that's that, a little confusing. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think they can get it though. You're right. In other words, like we do quote, we do figuratively choose. You know, we we choose between like if somebody asks you, you know, choose between A and B. You know, that that's all right. That's a real question, and you're going to make a real quote unquote choice. It's just not a fundamental choice. In other words, like before you made the choice. You know, before the planet was created, what you were, whether you were going to choose A or B, had already been predetermined, had already been predestined, destined, fated. That's those are our lives. And again, so like, so you know, people say to themselves, "Oh my God, you know, our life is just a movie. You know, nothing's up to us. This is terrible." Remind yourself, remind yourself of how many movies you've gone to that you've enjoyed much more than your life. So, like, you know, basically we can enjoy our lives just as much, you know, overcoming this belief in free will as we do holding it. And I, I would say we can enjoy it even more. You know why? <laughs> because it makes life that much more amazing. More surreal, that's for sure. Yeah.
You know, in other words, like, I mean, think about it. We're like, you know, everybody's a puppet. Everybody's a robot. Everybody's a computer. Nothing that happens is, is up to any of us. And what's really surreal is that, like, whatever's causing us to do whatever we do has caused us to believe that we have a free will. Then caused me to believe we have a free well, will. Well, until, I mean, like, all right, it causes most up, of up us. Up to a certain point Right, in time, it yeah. causes most of us. So think about that. Why would the universe cause us to... to to completely miss, miss... Because the pleasure principle trumps reason. If you love something so much, and I t if you love, you're addicted like a heroin addict to free will, belief, and George and Nick come on the show and say you don't have free will, and that depresses you, and you feel terrible, you're going to just discount it and go back to your drug, your heroin, your free will belief. Even if it's not logical, and there's no reason to it, and it doesn't make any sense, and it's insane, you're still going to take that hit of free will, belief heroin shot. So I think it's very understood. We have to convince the people, like you're saying, life is more pleasurable without free will. You can be happier and more pleasurable than, you know, play that card. But even if you're the same or worse, it is the truth. And you got to think it's better to live in the truth than in a fairy tale. Absolutely. That's on some, but most people like fairy tales, it seems. Uh, not more than fairy tales. People crack are completely addicts, delusional. Free will crack addiction. Free will delusional. Free, free will in, insane people. I mean, insane plants. If you, there's, there's hardly anything more insane. In other words, somebody could believe that yeah, they were like... They're like... They're somebody, in, sorry. Somebody, all right. Somebody could believe that they're king of France, right? And they're living out in Omaha someplace. Yeah, but you know alcohol is an addiction, right? Or yes. They, these people are intoxicated with free will. They're addicted. They can't stop. They like it too much. I know. It's I bad know. for them. Okay, go ahead. And, uh, well, the surreal thing is, like, the, the universe has made them addicted to this thing that's, like, causing them this pleasure. we, we got to do shows on that. But, again, like, somebody, somebody in Omaha, in Idaho, could believe that they're the king of France, and they would be more sane than a person believing that they have a free will. Because, because I mean, who knows? They could be the king of France. Maybe, like, maybe they're, like, you know, some unknown lineage or something. So there's a possibility of their being the king of France. But I wasn't debating. No I wasn't saying how crazy it was. Will. I was just giving you the reason why people believe that. I know, I know. All right, and all right, again, so, like, that goes to the entire, to the surrealness of this. You've got the universe. One making us believe that we have a free will, okay? And, and now, interestingly, what, what, what's cool that the universe does do is that, you know, just like we used to believe the world is flat, we used to believe certain things that now we know are not true. So now the universe is like in the process of correcting us. It made us make the mistake because we didn't, we didn't believe in free will of our own. We believed in free will because the universe made us. So now it's saying, all right, now, like, I had you believe this. Now I'm going to tell you the truth. It's kind of like, like when parents teach your kids about, well, there's a Santa Claus guy that comes down the chimney and, like, you know, brings us all presents. Okay. Eventually tell the... But if free will is the ultimate in, in insanity, like you're implying, and free will is the ultimate in nonsense, like you're saying, and free will is the ultimate in BS... OK, yes. How come no politician, no cultural institution, no CNN talk show, no uh, Main Street or what do you call town hall meeting really has debated this in public? If you're saying it's so egregiously nonsensical and so harmful, why is it ignored? Two fundamental Except for reasons. us. Two fundamental reasons. One. People, and you said it's the most important thing ever. It is, yeah. it is. So go ahead. Um, the first reason is the people who run this world aren't all that bright. They have a lot of emotional intelligence. The, the most successful people in the world, they don't have high IQs. They don't know how to think, but they know how to relate to people. That's how they get into positions of power. So these people are not that bright. Um, trust me. The second reason is that these people are not that good. In other words, like, because, like, for example, like, somebody becomes the president of CNN, right? The guy believes in free will. He's full, he's full of ego. He's full of pride. Look what I did of my free will. I'm so much greater than all you are, right? You know, and, and like, I'm making so much more money than you because I deserve it because I have my free will. So people have that mindset, right? So, I mm. mean, like, so if they weren't that immoral, you know, they would, they would understand. They would understand that, oh, oh, you know wait a minute, none of this is up to me. You know, in other words, like, people believe in free will because they, they believe, they wrongly believe it's, advan it's more advantageous. Maybe the media and schools and the mental health system thinks it's dangerous to teach 
There's no free will? Good point. Absolutely. Some people... That the advent of this knowledge will cause chaos yes. and no more law and order? Some people, because, that, of their, because of their lack of intelligence, believe that, like, that if everybody got that we don't have a free will, then like, anybody could claim, well, you can't blame me for anything, right? Well, well, it's true. You can't be. You're still responsible. Exactly. We've done shows about yeah. this. So, so, right. We're not fundamentally bl to blame, but the civilization is not going to fall apart. We're not, we're not going to let either ourselves or other people get away with things because we have to uphold civilization. So that's your theory, that it's that the people don't want this out, this knowledge out there because people are afraid that everything will collapse into chaos. That's, that's one reason. But it's not really going to happen that way because we'll still have our laws and accountability pragmatically just no deep blame fundamental blame exactly it's like in psychology in psychology you know they use the paradigm of operant conditioning they understand that we as human beings respond to punishment and reward you know reward and punishment so basically that's how our society works you know if, if we do certain good things society and we reward ourselves and each other. If we do certain things, we threaten punishment, that, that, that acts as a deterrence. You know, it just like, it motivates us to do the right thing. And that would continue. All right, I think that, I think they understand that, you know, that we don't really technically make choices, okay? Everything is predetermined, everything is like a movie, and if you've enjoyed movies more than you enjoyed your life, because I'm sure you have, because most of us have in various times, then you can understand how overcoming this insidious delusional belief in free will can actually be a blessing to your life, can, can make your life, sorry, can make your life much, much better. Okay, um, we got about less than a minute. I, I don't know what to talk about him. If I had a free will, I would know. Uh, See? Something's not right here. I got you claiming this is the most nonsensical, <laughs> insane, and I agree, belief that no mainstream media... It was on the cover of one or two magazines a few years ago. Uh, those are minor magazines, like no, Scientific... Scientific American? I know, but we want, like, a New York Times article, are a front you? page, you know, or seeing... Uh, why it's not really discussed... Now, it's still in the taboo. All right, John Gray, John Gray, yeah, who wrote ahead. Men Are From Mars, uh, Women Are From Venus, is coming out with a novel in May, a novel that's going to explain this. So tune in for that and tune into the show and check us out because we'll, we'll explain until you get it.